don't know why I'm recording. There's June. <laughs> hey. Hi, June. Hey, guys. Is is Barry there, Jason? Yeah, Barry's here. He's on the screen. He's just. Can you ask him a question? Hey, Barry. We can ask him. Hold on. Let's start the meeting first. Barry, your your microphone is off. Barry is muted. Hi. All right. Try now, Barry. I got it. I got it. Okay. I think everyone's unmuted. I can't start my video. It's Tina. Tina can't start her video. There we are. That's fine. We'll hear you. I can't start my video either, but I'm sure that's a benefit rather than a feature. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we could start. It says it's recording. That's good. All right, are we ready, everyone? Yep. Is Charles on here? I think Charles yeah, is here. here. Charles is here, okay. We ready? Yes. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Can I, can I ask a question of Barry? Go ahead. Barry, did you, uh, were you able to order the slide? Not yet. I called him several times, he had to call me back, John. I mean, you have not called me back. I called and left messages on the answer machine for them to call me as soon as possible. Jeez. But June has the number. What? Why don't we? What, I know June know. gave me the June gave me the number, John. I'm calling him. I left. So you have the information to contact him, Barry. If you want me to follow up with him, I can. But it it sounds like. It may just be, you know, a vacation timing problem, and he'll get to you upon his return. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, as soon as possible. I appreciate it. I'll follow up if it'll help. Yes, I appreciate yep. it, June. That'd be, that'd be great, June. Thanks. Thank you. The kids love that slide, Barry. I know. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Barry. You're welcome, John. Okay, are we ready to start the meeting? And someone call it to order and we'll begin. Is Randy, who's, where's our chair? Not here? Randy's not here. Okay, Tina, you wanna take these duties then? Somebody? I think I see that Kristen and Carrie can't unmute. Yes, they're on mute. No, they can't unmute. And Tina. Can J Jason, can Jason, can you let them unmute? That I may have I'm, to do it. Good. I'm good I'm, now. He, I'm unlocked. Okay. I think Carrie needs it. And I think Tina. Okay. Yep, I'm good now. You should be able to unmute. It says allow. Okay. okay, so everyone's good? Except for t Tina, are you good? Tina's, Tina is still She's uh, muted. Hi, it's Emily. Am I in? Yeah. I'm unmuted. Great. Okay. Okay. Okay, Tina's on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So well, I'd like to call the meeting to order. So I'm going to get a second it. I'll second. second. I'll second. Okay, so the first item on the agenda is the Harbor Island Conservancy. Um, we have June Ottinger and John Ferris here. Hi. Um, so uh, June is going to give you a report of a meeting uh, that she had while I was away with the county and uh, bring you guys up to date on 
uh, what we're doing to create a plan to redo the gardens at the Boston Post Road and Oriana Avenue from the construction uh, from the county, who promised us in the very beginning that they would uh, let us rehire the landscaper that we had do this in the first place, which was Graf, G-R-A-F, a landscaping design company. And they've done all the park work uh, that uh, the village and the Harbor Island Conservancy have done together, all the gardens and things. And um, so the, the county had okayed that before they even started to rip our stuff apart, which of course they did. And uh, so now June has a follow-up on that and we're gonna continue um, uh, next week sometime with, a, with our own group. And we wanted to bring all that to uh, your committee to uh, let you know or get any input you'd like to make. Uh, so I'll let June go ahead. Hi guys, um, we did have a meeting. Um, it was Dan starting off with the village. Uh, I was representing Harbor Island Conservancy. Dave Graff was there, and then three uh, people with the well, excuse me, two people with the county, and then Echo, the the uh, subcontractor for the county. And we're trying to finalize what needs to be done in order to restore that corner garden to what it was before this project started three years ago. And um, what the county is, is asking from Harbor Island Conservancy is exactly what the names and the species that have to be replaced. They have the county has in its plan just a, a general name of the taxes period uh, that was um, planted along in front of the uh, rock wall that has the Harbor Island Park sign on it. But we had chosen a dwarf uh, species um, so that it would never, um, it could grow 12 feet, I guess, if you just let it. But with the dwarf size, it would never grow over that sign. So Dave is in the process of submitting the exact uh, dwarf species that have to be replaced, not the, just the general terms that was in the county's uh, plan. The other thing that Dave has brought to the county's attention is that over these three years, I can't believe it took that long, but uh, over the three years, the uh, uh, morning glory and uh, a horrible invasive plant called mugwort has just taken over and the roots go, um, would, Barry, you know what, what uh, these two plants are like. They are so um, invasive. And once they get established, uh, it literally takes removing about a foot of soil and pulling out those roots. If you just go in and kind of try to dump some stuff on top of it or just give it a good you know, plowing, you've probably created three times the plants that were already there because each root then becomes another plant. So Dave is in the process. The county has given us probably until about this first to second week of, of September to give to them the exact names of the plants that have to be replaced and the type of work that needs to be done to get rid of the weeds. In addition to that, um, in looking over this plan that the county, excuse me, that the county um, is using to restore that corner. It shows the um, uh, three, uh, I think it's um, October glory maples uh, and a crepe myrtle as plants, uh, trees that need to be replaced. And they were asking for a specific location. They're, the county could possibly care less. And so he really leaves it up to the village, um, which it just says in the plan, the exact location to be confirmed with the village of Mamaroneck. And since these are trees, I then um, called in the uh, chair of the tree committee to look over this plan to give us a um, their wishes for where they would like for these trees to be planted. The trees that the county has in their plan um, is three October Glory maples and one crepe myrtle. And so Beverly Sherrod, the one of the co-chairs of the tree committee, and I met, and we have I have gotten her input and have sent that over to. Dave Graff to put into the final plan to submit to the county. 
ooh, I got to kill this mosquito. Hold on. Um, so what I believe is, is in the works is this final plan will go to the county. The county will obviously um, approve the plan. They have uh, put this out to bid and will issue the uh, please plant this um, um, by hopefully later this fall. Dave has said that they could, that the planting can be done probably up through the end of November. So there's a good possibility if the plan gets approved um, quickly with the county, which I know that sometimes doesn't happen, but they seem to think, as a matter of fact, I think it was Zano with Echo who said, as soon as I get this final of what needs to be done, he calls it, I'm going to the well, which means that this will be it. Not, you know, this is the final, final, final plan and nothing will change after this. And so we're hoping that some things can get planted, especially the soil, the removal of those weeds from the soil can get done this fall. And then the uh, plants that need to be uh, replaced and the trees planted can be done possibly this fall or early spring. So there, it seems that there is a, there is going to be a final restitution of that corner. Right. I walk by there uh, every day almost. So I'm looking forward to that. So I've got a question. Uh, this is Carla. So where we planting, are they mature trees? What size caliber uh, maples are they? Like two and a half to three inch or are they uh, one, one and a half inch caliber trees? By caliber, what do you mean? They should be on your scale there. I think. It is, it's, it's, they're saying two, one, hmm. Because it'll say caliber basically one of the, uh, the columns. It does, it says caliber, it's two, three caliber. So two to three inch caliber. Right. Okay, so they're okay, they're sizable, they're good. And the yeah. great myrtle they say is 10 feet high. Okay, which is great. Which is probably a, a pretty good size for a great myrtle because it'll double yeah. in size very quickly. Yeah. yeah, I'm all aware of it. And then uh, the other thing is you said until the end of November, that can go beyond November depending upon mother nature because I've planted until January. Uh, like last year was a very mild winter and you can still get the material easily locally, and hopefully they're getting material here locally in the Northeast rather than coming from Tennessee or North Carolina because of the weather. And I know that the village also gets the trees locally when they're going through their planting uh, process throughout the year. Yes. What we wanted to make certain is that we already have three crepe myrtles down there. And yep. so we wanted to make sure that the crepe myrtles that they bring in are the exact same as the other three so that there is some consistency in the look. Right. So those are the things that Dave is providing the county with the exact right. names. Um, also, there's, um, in addition to, the, to what's on here, there's two Coosa dogwoods that have suffered quite a bit because the irrigation and access to them was very limited and the county I believe has agreed to replant those as well as some of the trees that were destroyed um, along the uh, sidewalk and I believe the tree committee is working with the county and the village with that part. I don't believe that is part of this plan that but the county it's has not. told the tree committee that they will be replacing those, but I'm not familiar with that part. Yeah, June, that that's not part of the plan that they're doing. Uh, when are they going to do that, Barry? Do you have any idea? Um, that's up to the tree committee when they decide when they're going to do trees. From what I understand, what the county's doing, what June's talking about is just what she read off. That's it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Okay, um, in addition to this, um, the um, Harbor Island Conservancy has been looking at a couple of projects. Um, the uh, Oriana Point Association wants to improve on the, the children's playground park there along Rushmore. And we also would like to improve the look uh, on the other side of the rock wall 
uh, where the electrical equipment was removed by the county. And so um, we will probably be bringing a proposal to the village uh, within the next month or two um, about um, improving that area, um, access for, for handicapped people and places for them to sit because the view there is spectacular. Mm -hmm. And also uh, working with the Oriana Point Association to come up with a plan for that park. And those are the only two projects that are, well, it's pretty um, preliminary, but that are in the works right now. We have, oh, we also have, uh, I've got a meeting coming up with uh, an Orienta uh, resident um, who is a very good friend of mine and a very philanthropic fellow. And I think he's going to help us raise some money, maybe put in a matching yeah. amount of money for uh, helping to redo that little playground uh, that June's speaking about. It really needs some work to it. So I think by next spring, we'll, we'll be able to get the money together to uh, do something positive there. That'll be great for little kids. Barry, I'd like to compliment you on the maintenance for that Rushmore Park. Uh, you're doing a great job. The wood chips look good. The weeds are under control. At one point, those weeds got so high, I was afraid we might lose a child in there, but I was just <laughs> there the other day. The, the park is clean. The wood chips are clean. The weeds are gone. You're doing a really good job, and I appreciate it. Thank you. you and that's our boy. Does it work? Yeah. Thanks, Barry. Hey, June, I just have one question, June. When are you meeting with the county back out there again? I don't believe there's another meeting. I believe that what uh, was agreed with um, the village was that this final plan that we're working on to give the uh, the most specific data about the plantings, that that plan will be submitted to um, Zano, is that his name? Anyway, okay. the, the fellow with Echo. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, probably within the next two weeks. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm asking is, um, I'll, I'll call Dave back, but I want to just go over something when I'm on the grass area. And when they plant everything and then put the flower bed back, I would like to see it back the same way as it was before they took it apart. Yeah. Uh, yes, right? and in that plan, we're also having them, um, Dave is working to make sure that the irrigation system that was there that has been broken and, and uh, that, that is replaced to... correctly. Okay. Yeah, if, that, if, if that's not put together correctly, we're going to waste a lot of money. Yeah. So, I mean, Dave has been very thorough in making certain that the final plan that the county works with has all of the correct ingredients, the irrigation system, the right names of the plants, the right size of the plants, and the restoration to get rid of the weeds. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or oh, questions? Man. Great. Well, this sounds great, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, we can't, we can't wait can't wait to get that redone. That was so beautiful before they started. <laughs> but it's very positive down there, so it'll it'll come out great. I have to ask, what what actually is the building that the county built there? What is that for? Pumping station. Pump, pumping station. Pumping. Sewage oh, okay. pumping. Sewage pumping. Actually, the, I think they put up a fairly attractive building. They did, yeah. yeah I would know. like to comment on that. I have mean, people that, especially if you ride your bicycle by there, it really smells like somebody needs to change the baby's diaper. It is really a raw smell. Yeah. And the, the day, it was last Monday, a week ago, that I met with the county there, uh, there were also three electrical people with the county trying to find out you know what's going wrong in that building to to fix that problem so i know that they're working on it but it is a very foul smell right now yeah. and potent. a lot of people in orienta are pretty upset about it but i do understand that the county is is, is aware of the problem 
and is working on it. But Nora, if the village can put a lot of pressure on them to get that fixed, that would uh, yeah. be great. Yeah, I've driven by that several times this week and it's sort of, it's, it's overwhelming. And the one in um, Shore Acres is not. There's one at, at, the, at, at South Barry and that, yeah. you know, that, that, you know, that's, I walk by that a lot and that's been up for two years. So that is something that we're working on. Well, the, it, it was my understanding from talking with the electrical engineers there that they know that there's a problem. They know that they need to fix it. And they're trying to figure out exactly what needs to be done to do that. But I do think that sometimes just making sure that, that we know that it's a problem yeah. might help. Yep, yep. I agree. I agree. Well, thank okay. you. All. Thanks very much for, for, Thanks for coming. bringing this oh, forward. It's very thank exciting. You. Thank you thank both, you. really. Thank you. Uh, thank I don't you. know how to sign out, but. Thanks for we'll, your we'll, we'll, sign, we'll sign out. Have a good meeting. Bye. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Nice have to talk night, to you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So do we want to talk about the dog park or do we want to approve the minutes? Um, Let's approve the minutes last because we have people chiming in saying they would like to know when we're bringing this topic up. Okay, fine. We have uh, attendees, a few attendees, so. Okay. So you, right. are you going to add them? Um, you, you guys can discuss it and then when you want me to let someone speak, just let me know. Okay, cool. All right. So who wants to start? So I'll just chime in and say that I've read a lot of the emails that were submitted. Um, there's a lot of new people who are saying Florence Park would be a great place. I still absolutely think Florence Park is not the place to have any kind of a dog park. Even a small fenced in area, I think is a bad idea there. Um, I still think uh, the West Basin of the Harbor or Taylor's Lane are really the only two reasonable places to look into putting a dog park. And based on the emails, um, just that one email where the woman said that people were just constantly now more and more going to Florence Park illegally with their dogs and letting them loose. There's no ranger. Um, that just convinces me even more that if people actually had a place to go with their dogs legally where they could let them run off leash, that it really is a needed addition to the village. So can I chime in now, Carlo? Hi, Carlo. Please, doing, go guys? ahead. So um, we've been kicking the can down the road for many years about the dog park. And, and I, there's a third area that needs to be considered. We spoke about Taylor's Lane and we spoke about uh, Rushmore Avenue. The third alternative is basically uh, where Barry's equipment is and his staff. Um, down at the harbor, um, because if you put it in Florence Park, if you put it at Daniel Warren, if you put it at Columbus Park, everyone's going to want one in their neighborhood. So the Taylor's Lane and also the Rushmore Avenue basically would be more costly um, to operate because you have to have parking and so forth. Whereas down at the har at the harbor where the blue building is, I mean where the uh, the Parks Department is, it already has parking, and what you could do on a temporary basis. And depending upon size, as they do with the car show, they just put up a snow fence, a temporary, uh, if it needs to be addressed immediately. So those are the three areas that I think, but I don't, absolutely not in Florence Park, because you would have um, issues there with parking, with the neighbors, and you know, it's pros and cons, and there's always two sides. And then the other neighborhood as well. I, I also have to think that uh, Florence Park is a bad idea. I've been I've been walking a lot in the town of Rye and uh, by Rye Beach, and they have a dog park there. Not a dog park, but they have a park where dogs could walk mm -hmm. in the morning off leash, and it's a really great place to see the dogs and people gather. And by nine o'clock, they have to be out. And you walk the park there, and there's nothing left behind. You know, people are picking up and it's really a very social uh, uh, place to be. So I, I, maybe someplace in Harbor Island where it's Lancer Field or someplace in Harbor Island, it could be like that. I mean, we should maybe look into the town of Rye and what they do because they're doing it really well. 
And there's plenty of communities that have them also. I mean, because I researched it also. New Rochelle's got it. Elmsford has them. White Plains has got two. Mm-hmm. Rockville and Rye. And some of them charge fees. Others basically don't. Um, plus, you know, um, if the individuals bring their animals down there, they should get ticketed if they're not doing the right thing. And that comes down to enforcement as well. And then do you have two sections where for, or three sections, small dogs, medium dogs, big dogs? Or how do you address it? Listen, I'm, I've been looking at the town of Rye, and they have all kinds of mixed breeds. I mean, there's no differentiation. There's dogs running all over the place. They're all playful. There's groups of people in one corner. There's groups of dogs in the other corner. And it's really, uh, I mean, you guys got to go there, go on a Sunday morning and look at it. You know, they got to be out by 9 o'clock. You know, when people the beach to park, too. But uh, I mean, it's really a nice place to look at. And I, and I think Harbor Island could be the same thing. You know, that's not the whole harbor, but maybe Lancer Field or some place in Crochet not Field, Atlanta, you know. Barry, where so. is, Carla, where is the area you're talking about? Well, that- it's, tri- it's where many years ago I told them because, well, we had to deal with extra playing fields and we finally moved the uh, the light pole when I was like associated with the Romantic Junior Soccer League. There's a tree. It's not on Lanza. It's where, you know where the car show is basically, Randy? Yes. Um, if you're looking at the car show, saying we're um, looking at the water, it's all the way to the right where the building is. Okay. And, but, but there's two issues there, and it's always been an issue. The county basically has been talking about repairing that pier for how many years now, Barry? 30, 25? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, actually, it's actually in the works, Carla. Right. And they were supposed to basically store their, their, their material there, machines, whatever, and that was always a, a no. And the other thing also in – is the volleyball. Um, they were supposed to erect volleyball courts there too, right, Jason? Because the the, uh, the league basically has grown big time. And we were toying with the idea of putting um, courts there as well. Am yeah, I wrong, we, Jason? As a part of our uh, capital project, we would right. expand upon the area once right. the county completed their portion of the works. That way right. the village money didn't right. go to get ruined um, because we have dead space there and, and we right. have a need and it, for it. Right, it's a big area. Big area. We're not talking about playing on Lanza, you know, near Lanza, but it's all the way near the seawall, basically. Um, and there's plenty of room there, plenty of room to, to build. I mean, it doesn't need to, again, a dog park. I'm not sure what the size is going to be, but you know, I mean, there's plenty of room for a dog park there, I think. And the parking. Carlo, is- are you talking about over by the Harbor Master? Yes. Yeah, that's where Barry is. It's probably easy. Late, everybody, listen. It's where the big flagpole is. Yeah, bingo. You're, you're what talking you talking about over near the flag? Right. That's where the uh, that's the other thing too, Barry. Because what's there? The, uh, the uh, internet, whatever they got there. Do we make about a hundred grand a year? The cell tower. Cell tower. That's it. I couldn't hear you. Dan said it. The cell tower, Barry, which is the flagpole, basically. Because in there, I know we make money, also. Yes. Right. That's the area that I'm talking about. So what do other members think? Is this, is the consensus that Florence Park is probably not a great area for a dog park? I just want to yeah. know. I, yeah, I agree. I don't think Florence Park is a good idea for a dog park. I just, Florence is just too residential. And there's yeah. too many, there's houses that completely surround Florence Park and it's such a utilized park. By for so many different things, the family, you know, people walking on the track, and okay, I just, so I really think if people had a place to go, let's take them maybe. Out of the mix. So should we have? Should we convene and meet in this location where we're talking about by the flagpole so everybody can see it? Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I make a re- can I make a recommendation? To- sure. I, I, so thanks. So I think the whole idea of Florence Park was it was just a conversation on Facebook. I mean, I don't, it, the, the thought was that the rep committee had recommended it, which was never the case. It just sort of had a life of its own. So, so what I sent a bunch of, I thought that we're going to be on backup, but we had a little bit confused. But I had done some research about people, you know, or other places have set up dog parks. And, you know, basically, but one of the situations is you need parking, you need enforcement. And the city of Rye enforces the town of Rye dog park because the town of the, the, the is in the city of Rye, and it's quite an expense. So that's something that has to get figured out. Um, so I was thinking that maybe a subcommittee of the rec department of the rec commission could get together and think about what would be a good option. 
whether it might be even a different piece of property where we can, you know, it's, we're, instead of limiting it to the parks we have, think about a different piece of property, come up with a so that we're not at the mercy of somebody who makes a suggestion on social media and it sort of takes off. So, I mean, it's great that people are engaged, but that that caused a, a lot of emails. I sent, I think I think I have gathered all the emails that the Board of Trustees got about these comments. I think I found a few more today. But I, you know, I think that maybe if there's a, a, a plan for a dog park, we might have a better chance of I think that's a good idea. Tina, Tina, what do you think? Can I just chime in for a second? Can I just chime in for a second? Just to let you all know, um, where Carl was talking about putting the dog park, um, it's not a good idea, first of all. Um, when we sat with the lady, I can't think of the lady's name, doctor, whatever her name was, she thought it was not a good idea to put that there because between the benches, the walk there, and everybody else, that, she didn't think that was a great idea to have a dog park. The two places she talked about, dude, I talk, took her to every place in the morning. Two places she talked about putting a dog park that would be feasible and nice for everybody would either be Taylor's Lane or the Rushmore Avenue area over there. Those were the two places that she talked about in the whole village that would be good for her. I took to every site that we had, and those were the two that she thought would be the best. Away from kids and not near anybody where if something happened. Guys, can we let, um, I have a few people I want to make comment. Can we let someone come and make it, allow them to talk? Please, let's let them sure. come. Okay, Elizabeth? Can I, can, I, can I make a comment and ask a question first? It's Tina. Okay. okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I agree. I feel like it's not safe places where there's playgrounds, at least. The only place I was thinking, and I don't know what the person told you there, Barry, is uh, Stanley Avenue Park. It's fenced in really nicely, and you have that big area right along the train. She if turned that down, Tina. She yeah. turned that down. She said, no way. Why? Between basketball and everything with the playground, she said it's not, you, know, you don't have enough distance in the law of having the space between the kids and everybody. Okay. That's a, that's yeah, a real neighborhood park. That we find a place in Harbor Islands. I mean, it seems to be the only real place that has good parking and everything. And there's that's what I'm saying, Tina. When I told you I took her to every spot, those are the two spots she talked about that would be only reasonable to put into the village. Okay. Barry, that was the dog park consultant that you guys hired? Yes. The only I still, thing on the Avenue side, though, is there's nowhere to park. Same situation at Taylor's Lane, and that's why, Barry, I disagree with you. I tend to believe that the blue building is ample room there because it's not near any child of any kind. I, no. I, I understand you disagree. Okay, that's your that's your prerogative. Yeah, that, that's my opinion. That's all. I'm just, I'm just relaying the message from the village. I had her come in here, and I'm just telling you what she's telling us. Yeah, no, I hear you, but I'm there like for the last 40 years and I really don't see a lot of kids playing in that particular area other than, well, soccer on occasion, but you can put it as close to the pier as possible and it's out of the way and that area is not where they're going to train or practice because it's uneven, it's not graded properly and there's always water there, so that would have to be addressed. And then if you do Taylor's Lane and Rushmore, the, the cost factor is going to be a lot more because you have to create parking. I, I agree with Carlo. I think that we should take a look at it and maybe if there's, we can set rules too where you can't use it during the time kids are playing soccer or you can't use it at certain times of the day or something like that. Because that's where they warm up, Tina, but if you keep pushing it towards the, the pier basically, there's ample room back there, um, I think. And again, I'm not, a, you know, again, I'm not certain if you need 100 by 100 or 50 by 50 or much larger, but there's plenty of room then, I feel, down there that you could right. put something. And there's no, parking. I, I and and it's gonna make money I, for I'm going to be unmuted. Yes. Carlo, the only thing is if they decide to start the pier and everything. Yeah, that's the issue. Okay. I mean it was supposed to be started last September, but there's only Barry, you know as well as I do, it's been thirty years I've been talking about doing that. Thirty I know, and I still haven't done it. 
I understand, Carla, but we went to the meeting. What happened was they were actually supposed to start. The village coastal water put a stop to it. Okay. Okay. Um, they all actually supposed to start up again. Okay. When are they going to start? I'm not sure. But they have a bunch of plans in sight to making that whole pier look really nice. So when you're talking about putting it, it's not going to work. Because if you look at the plans, what they have set up for it out right. there, it's going to be well. Right. And I agree with you, Bear. And it's just, you know, they've been toying with the idea. Manny, chime in. We've been talking about the pier for how many years? And nothing's taking place. And maybe this time it will. You know, maybe it will. But Hopefully. I think with, with the pandemic, you know, funding and money, you know, they're going to all of a sudden start saying cut, cut, cut. And the money's not going to be there to build, build, build. That's my feeling. And I'd be maybe totally wrong, but I don't think the funding is going to be there for that. It's not a high priority. In, I think for no. the county as, as a whole. No, can we just, no, can we just find out? I, I was just I was just writing a note to say that we should have a peer update for the next Rec and Parks meeting. Okay. I was just okay, sending you I was sending you an email that says that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Barry, you what is the, Barry, what is the size that they recommend for the dog park? Okay, she read if, uh, we're trying to find a report. We couldn't find it, but from my knowledge and what I remember, there was two you need two types. You need one for big dogs and you need one for small dogs. Okay, she was saying, and I think the space was 50 by 50 or 50 by five. Okay, I'm not, I'm gonna make a call this week to her and just find out if she can send all the information that she had. Okay, okay, Sandy had all the information, but I don't, we can't find it. We look for it, we couldn't find it. So I got a question. Um, I Barry, I know, I know how to find the the woman's information. All right. Okay. So we'll work on that tomorrow. We'll see. I'll go through your emails and see what we can dig up from from her. Okay. Okay. Thank you, John James. And, uh, I we have a contact for the county here, and I will make sure that we send that gentleman an email so we could uh, with the county. Jason. We are with it. Jason, I got a question for you. I mean, because I've been reading uh, about the neighborhood, other communities. You know, with people reviewing, you know, some say it's small, some say it's big. Is it possible we can reach out to the other municipalities and see what size they have, you know, and, and come up yeah. with a gauge? Because so, what works for, I mean, this lady may say it, it's ideal, but it, like in Harrison, I think Harrison has a small one. You know, maybe it's working, maybe it's not working, or maybe we need to meet somewhere in between. I, I remember, um, I remember the village manager asking Dan Sarnoff to send it out into one of their managers. They have this managers group where they send it out to all the municipalities and they get feedback back. So I'll ask Dan if he's going to do that. If not, I can ask Allie to help me do some research and see. Yeah. Uh, just see what the other municipalities have. Yeah. I can just jump in here. Um, Nora did some research and Stratford did a really good job of vetting this whole process. I, I don't understand why we just don't reach out to them and see if we can get some something going through that process. It seems like they did all the work already. You can also reach out to um, the people who put together the Port Chester Dog Park. That is kind of exactly the kind of model I think we should be looking at. And um, they also, just for the record, you, I know everyone's saying, no, keep it away from kids. You have to walk past the kids' playground to get to the dog park. They have a very small parking area. It's not big at all. Um, and you walk past the playground to get to their dog park. They have three fenced-in areas, large dog, small dog, a very small little timeout area if your dog needs to be by itself, in case it's moody, who knows. And they have water. They have poop bags. Um, it's just a really well-designed dog park. I've been there many, many times with my dog. And I really think that kind of a dog park is what we should be looking at. I had been in contact with the, with the woman who actually spearheaded this a while back. Um, she, she was very open to meeting and helping us out and like putting together what we should be doing. But if you haven't looked at Porchester's dog park, I think that's really the ideal model. Harrison's dog park is very small. Yeah, um, small. Rye Town Park isn't really a dog 
park per se. No. It's just a park where they allow dogs mm -hmm. in the morning <laughs> off leash. I like Laura's idea. We can be, you know, there's so many of us. I think, you know, like Carrie and whoever else is like a very dog centric person that like three or four, three of you or how many or want to do this, come back with a report. You can take pictures and then we'll all be informed versus right now I feel it's like disjointed. I'd like to have a report. I'm happy to work with, with a subcommittee because I do think Randy's right. We'll keep talking about this meeting after meeting and maybe we just need to have a smaller group kind of do a deep dive and come back with an That's idea. That's how things get done. Mm -hmm. So who wants to be on the small, who wants to be on the dog committee? Well, duh, obviously. <laughs> I'm happy to be part of it because I'm well, passionate well, about it. I want to. I can, I'm happy to. So, Tina, you're interested in dogs? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. For all I don't have have to to dogs and dogs. <laughs> Sorry. Can, I, can you tell me where the dog park in Portchester is? I would like to go and look at it. I it's Avondroff. It's Avondroff yeah. Park. Yes, Barry. Yeah. Let me just I live look right at here. I live in Port Jesus, so I've uh, I've been there multiple times. I'll get some photos of it. It's so really it's nice. Carrie and Tina, and anybody else? Because I'm not a dog. I'm, lover, so I'm totally unqualified. Well, I like dogs. Elizabeth here. I own one. Hi, Elizabeth here. Um, can Elizabeth, can would you like to say going. something? Yeah, we have two guests who'd like to talk. Please. Yeah. Great. Well, can I let um, Elizabeth has her hand up? If you don't mind, I'll mm -hmm. let Elizabeth. Speak. Um, sure. Elizabeth, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I, I also want to see if there was any update to the dog law for the parks. Is there any update on permitting dogs on leashes in the village parks? Um, I, I sent that as one question, as you saw, and then a couple of other questions were just that if budget is an issue, um, uh, you know, would, would, could we have you know, do we want to do a fundraiser from interested residents who, would, who could contribute towards a, a dog park? However, it's, you know, however it's, it plays out. And happy to also participate in some kind of committee if, if you need someone from, you know, someone else from the community to, to join in. Subcommittee. <laughs> Terrific. I, I can give an update on the dogs and parks. So the Last, at our last meeting, the last Board of Trustees meeting, which was a week ago, Monday, um, we um, just decided to um, go forward with a um, proposed law that will allow, expand dogs on leash in Harbor Island Park. And that was a recommendation from this committee. So it will be on our, I think it's gonna be on our September 14th agenda to schedule a public hearing uh, later in the month, either the end of September or, or early October. And um, there is a map that Jason created that probably, maybe we could put that on the park, on the website, on the Parks Committee website. It'll definitely go up on the agenda when we're talking about this law and scheduling the public hearing. So the, 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 so the goal is to, enter, to have, to expand dogs on leash in Harbor Island Park. And, there, and, and, and we also were hoping that the rec committee would um, think about, param really think about a dog park as opposed to having dogs in other parks because that seems there seems to be very great opposition to it in addition to which it's a very expensive endeavor for the village to enforce so the and that's you know the financial realities with COVID are like we just cannot keep starting new initiatives that cost more for enforcement because we have there's a we just can't we cannot enforce dog laws in in every park no, I mean, I, I'm not envisioning more than one yeah. dog park, but, um, but is, oh. is there an issue of just allowing dogs on leashes in all no, the parks? That, I mean, that's what I'm, that w there had been a proposal for that, but the idea of actually having the staff to enforce those hours is, oh. is complicated and expensive. So that's why we're starting with Harbor Island Park and hoping to create some sort of a dog park. Okay. Okay, we have, Marissa? Yes, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, Nora, I think um, what Elizabeth was saying is that um, primary, you know, the issue of having dogs um, in parks is twofold. So one is to allow them to be on leash with their owners 
in any of our parks, which would include the harbor, which would include Florence Park, um, you know, and Stanley Avenue, that, that park area as well. Um, our neighboring towns all allow dogs on leash in their parks at any hour of the day. So we're not sure why Mamaroneck has chosen to just either, um, you know, outlaw them from, from, their, from our parks or as with Harbor Island, you know, it's just like 6 to 8 a.m. in the morning. They, you know, we can go into the harbor at that time or stay on the West Basin. So we're just not sure why that's a law and what, how we can overturn that. So in terms of Harbor Island, there's gonna be, the proposal is to greatly expand the hours that dogs can be in park. It's basically from dawn to dusk in Harbor Island Park on leash in larger portions of it. Um, there have been, there were some discussions by this committee to recommend that dogs be allowed in parks from six to eight in the morning um, and maybe, you know, six to eight at night. Um, and there was tremendous opposition to this from residents who use the park. Um, I actually tried to compile all the emails and, and I think we'll, we'll make sure we put them on the website um, as a backup to this agenda. For some reason, we just didn't get them up today. But um, the other issue is we don't really have staff to enforce ticketing for limited hours of dogs in parks. And so that's, that's just a real, that's a reality. So, so yeah, and then, no, I, so we can manage it in, we can manage it in um, Harbor Island Park because right. there is enough park staff, but there's, there's, a, you know, it's not just, it isn't any village employee who can do that enforce. Their people are charged with and have the training to do enforcing. It's not as if everybody in the village could do that, or we could have like volunteer or, you know, park rangers. We just can't do that. So right. that has been, those, those ideas have been discussed. And for the most part, there was huge opposition to it. Not a lot of support and a lot of opposition. One of the parks that was discussed was Columbus Park. Um, and it, it turns out that the people who really wanted that, the, the people who recommended it, um, actually their, their apartment complex has a dog park. It just hasn't been, it just isn't open. Mm -hmm. So there is this like little private dog park next to Columbus Dog Park for, the, for this new complex. So, um, but I, you know, if 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 it, the proposal was for every park and that seemed to be too much, so maybe if there are some, maybe if the rec commission, if people who are looking about the dog park can also come up with some, you know, ideas of where this could really work. But it also has to work for the village's enforcement obligations. So Jason is now uh, now an enforcer, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Laura, doesn't, think... doesn't someone have to enforce the, the rules now? I know there were some emails about people who say dogs, people are walking their dogs any time of the day. So that's how that's does that what, argument work? That's what they've been trying. That's what, that's what the village is trying to do now. And I think people who are frustrated that it's not properly enforced now do not think that basically express their opinions, especially around Florence Park that um, it would just cause more dogs and less, you know, less, it would be hard. It's, it, 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 even with the no, even with the rule that they aren't allowed there now, people are going there. So the idea of allowing allow, allow all, it just seemed to be overwhelming. I, th I mean, I do think what we really need is, a, is a, dog, a dog park. We do need a place where people can go and let their dogs go off leash because it's better for the dogs. Um. Okay. Can I just share my experience? I've been patrolling the parks for like about, at least I'd say about a month now. And I can say pretty confidently that I go around pretty much daily, weekends, I go all different times. And quite often I see dog owners are there and I just have a conversation with them. I explain to them what the rules are. Some people know about the rules and they say, okay, I will leave. Some people don't know. They just don't know. They don't read the sign, whatever it may be. Um, I think just educating people, there's been so much lax all these years that we just have to get people back in the mindset that these are what the rules are in the parks. And, and the more we go there and we just show people what the rules are and we explain to them in a nice manner, it, it seems to be working. At least I find it, I find it to be working. And I don't always see those same people in the park anymore like, I, like we did. But but Jason, going back to like, for example, Stanley Avenue Park, there's only one entrance and there's one big sign there that says basically no dogs allowed. You go to Florence Park, there are many ways of getting in. And that, 
a couple of entrances do have no dog signs, but if you're coming oh, off the never, uh, You're right. I've never seen a dog in, I've never seen a dog in Stanley Avenue Park. Right. And, and you I'm never will because that sign is there, you know, and there's only one entrance. Whereas at Florence Park, if you're coming down Jensen Avenue, there's no sign there. No signage of any kind. Right. So it depends on the park, you know, also. We could put signage up until we're blue, and it oh, doesn't no, I, do Jason, anything. listen, yeah, I'm okay. with you. Uh, right. I'm the one who says put less than more, because people just don't right. read, don't care, don't follow the rules, and no enforcement. And you know, uh, um, I also want to bring it up. I, I, you know, we were talking about a location, and um, we. I'm going to share my screen right now. A, a, a Google Street View. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is Greenhaven. You'll see TD Bank is over here. Mm -hmm. Behind here, Mangones, I'll scoot up a little bit. <laughs> Mangones is right here at the corner. This yep. is about an acre back here, and this is all village property, and it's off Ooh. the cap. See, you can see that. You see that fence line there where I'm pointing uh -huh. my cursor? That's where yep. the Taylor's Lane site is. Mm -hmm. All that from that fence to Mangones property line is all village property that's off the cap. Oh, that would so, be great. I yeah. told Jerry's the one who found this, and I he sent me there. I went, I took some photos, and I walked around. Yeah, there is a lot of wooded area. Um, Mangone's crack is back there, but we can take care of that no problem. Mm -hmm. We treat, we, you know, we, we clear a few trees out, we fencing, we do it right, and figure out parking or whatever details we got to figure out. But it's almost an acre, it's a large area, and it might be something that we could try to consider. So right wait, there. this isn't Taylor's Lane. This is it, this is Greenhaven. This is Greenhaven. So if I scoot up to the top here, you'll see. Oh, I think I went too far. There's the uh, Post Road. Over here's the bank. There's the traffic light. And Mangones is right here on the corner. Doesn't okay. That, doesn't, so that's that, doesn't that lead to Taylor's Lane? Because Taylor's Lane is right behind Mangones. Right? Yeah, yes. it's right there. And it's cleared. It doesn't so, have. This is what I'm telling you. You see this fence here, Tina, where I'm pointing now? That's the Taylor's Lane fence. Right. So anything inside that is the Taylor's Lane site. This is outside the cap of the Taylor's Lane site. Right. So what's the difference between just using Taylor's Lane, which is on the other side? Well, you don't have to worry about people's concerns with, with the cap. People have honest concerns about that. I hear it all the yeah. time. You don't yeah. have to worry about that. This is, is the whole lot. Right Jason, is the whole entire lot capped because I saw someone make a comment somewhere that only part of that lot is actually capped, but that the part close up behind Mangones is actually not capped. Is that true? I can't. Does anybody can't know speak. if that's true? I, I honestly can't speak on that. We would have to overlay that message to somebody who can answer. I, 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 I don't know much about that. Well, I just know that that area is outside of the fence. So so going, Jason, going back to what you said about people are concerned about their well-being and so forth, and George was there a couple months ago, and I had all the documentation back in the day, and even today, they're still testing it on a regular basis, and all the results have been encouraging. I think then, and I would assume they're probably good now, because if there was an issue, a lot of red flags would have been going up, a lot of work would have been um, taking place there over the years, and there hasn't been anything yet. But won't it take a very long time? I mean, I know that's all relative to actually use the Taylor's Lane property. Whereas, as Jason says, if this property is outside that fence, it could be done much quicker. Right? Well, why would it be done quicker? For what reason? Well, not, it's not part of the cap. If it's right. not under, it's not in the DEC. The but, DEC but, is watching a specific area. Right, but they, they cleared it for use, so it shouldn't right. matter. Uh, the no, concern no, is that's people. What I was trying to say. We it's don't have control over the site yet. It's not cleared. It's not cleared. We don't have control over the site yet, number one. And number two, even though it's cleared for use, there are people who do not think it's a good place for a dog park. And those are valid concerns. And whether, you know, sure. what, it leaves two different opinions. But I'm looking right now at the, at the, at the, at the Taylor Lane site. It's quite large. I don't know. Two soccer fields. If we have, but if we have another site that's usable now, that's actually close to the post road that might have available parking, that really isn't too near any residences. It seems like that's 
seems like Jerry may have hit on a great solution. Yeah. So One Jerry, so I believe if I'm, I believe like the inside the terrace lane, it's like only a portion of it is. It's not the entire yeah. thing. But this area, I'm, I'm pretty confident we can, we can use that area immediately, and it's village property already, and it's ours to work with. Um, and where's, the, where's the parking? We would have to talk about that. It's all part of a plan. We would have to come up with a plan. Create, we have to create parking. Right. This is raw space right now, but it's usable. But that's why we should also explore the road that you can park. Why can't we explore everything, like, and then come up with a plan? I mean, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm thinking about cost and funding. And again, I'll go back to Rushmore Avenue. You don't have to cut any trees down because you're going to have people coming out. But you're cutting trees down. There's, it's more expensive. Or the blue building or the parks department building back there. There's no clearing of any kind. The parking's already there. An example room. Carlo, when it comes to funding, I think I would recommend that we take it out of the recreation building fund like we do with the Columbus Parks Wing. Mm -hmm. Let the board consider that because we don't have to go into capital. That money is meant for to provide recreational space to village residents. Mm -hmm. This is obviously a clear need like the swings are in Columbus Park. Yeah. So I think that's a recommendation we can make to the board. And I think that's one that Jerry would, would also be comfortable with um, for funding. As long as the money's there, it's not an issue. And how much parking do you really need? And who's requiring the parking? Like whose requirement well, is it? Well, I think because I, if I, you put it at the west basin of the harbor, technically the harbor has parking and people could walk with their dog leashed into the dog park. So I'm just wondering so who's requiring I, the parking. Well, I think in terms of parking, you, you wouldn't want to, you know, there is not enough parking. There is no parking for Florence Park. So anybody coming would be parking you know, in residential neighborhoods. So the idea is that there's a place that you can go and, and take your dog out of the car and go. But I think those are the kinds of questions that should be done in the deep dive with Tina and Carrie and me and maybe anybody else who wants to do it. I think we should just like look through, look, you know, look at the, look at the Stratford proposal, look at Avondroth Park and see what we can do. With yeah, what we have. And, yeah. You know, I mean, look, Mary, parking's great, yeah. but if you know, you don't. I don't think you necessarily have to have parking to have a place for dogs to go. Although it's well, ideal, I don't know that it's. But we require everybody who's developing anything in the village, unless it's in you know a commercial just in the C two, to ha to provide parking. I mean, it's okay. it's we, it's what we ask of of people who are bringing a business or bringing a project to the village, and I think we have an obligation to make sure that we're not causing a parking problem with anything that we do. And, and have you ever seen, um, like if you're going onto the hutch where the Saxon Woods Trail is, mm -hmm. that's like, they call that parking, but that's like a stone gravel. We don't have to pave. You put right, no, yeah. oh, I totally right? agree. And it's very natural, a natural look, a natural feel and a few spaces. You yeah, know? no, you could put pea gravel and it would be very, very in, it would not be costly to do that. I totally agree. You don't need to make parking lines. You just put a pea gravel area and enough for however many cars think is necessary. I mean, I think our biggest cost on the project, it would be getting rid of all the trees, the, the clearing the area, because it's obviously has a lot of vegetation, right? To make for, it for that space. space, yes. Rushmore, you don't have to clear trees. You have the open space right. ready. And you're going to have a bunch of, I think, residents are going to start screaming, why are you clear cutting? It's going to be another battle. And also oh. on that, that green, green Haven, you're literally right on top of the road. I mean, and, and I mean, here we've already just passed the tree policy, didn't we? You know, not yet. We keep trying. <laughs> not right. yet. You don't say, Nora. I mean, you. I do. I do. But I also. This is why I think that, you know, that it's more beneficial to have a small group of people think about all the pros and cons, right. and you know, I mean, it, it, as Absolutely. long as you, as long as you have, I mean, you know, there's 11 members of your committee, so your quorum is, is seven, which is huge. So if you have less than seven people, you can meet, you can work together, and then you can make a presentation. And, you know, obviously you can get residents input. There's not, you know, there's no prohibition against that, but it right. seems like we have a lot of good ideas and maybe we need that now to flesh them out with some, some specifics. Right. And maybe Randy, do you need to be unmuted? Jason, Randy? Randy's muted. I think she's trying uh, to get unmuted. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Randy's... Okay, Randy's here she is. Okay, there you go. Well, that's pretty hard for me to be muted, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at your hand waving, and I'm like, 
<laughs> Thank you for picking up the body language. Okay, so two things I want to say. I served on this Taylor's Lane Committee. I still have the notes in 2007. And so the, the, the cap appears to be, you know, across the whole thing. Um, and I'm very familiar with that land. I, I, um, I sold a house right next to that. And Man Jones and all of that, there is a lot of land there. I think that's a super idea. Um, and even if we needed to take part of the Taylor's Lane thing, uh, you know, area within the fence, there's still a tremendous amount of land there that's so underutilized. And Carlo, to ask you to answer your question about the trees, if somebody's going to be unhappy about everything. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, uh, I think we have to think about, you know, that's, that's that what's the greatest amount of bang for our buck. And, you know, money is going to be very tight, let's face right. it. But I think there's a huge amount of dog lovers that would love this in some fashion. So I would, I'd like to make a motion that we have a small committee look at these various sites uh, and come back with a report and then let's vote on it. Can I have a second? I Absolutely. second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so whoever the members of the committee want to be, just ask Jason. I'm also not opposed to having Elizabeth or Marissa, if they want to participate, you know, uh, we're, uh, let's have open government. I think that's a good idea. Can they, can they send an email to Jason? They certainly can. I, I unmuted Marissa and Elizabeth so they can give their... Uh... Could you, could you put your Jason, I'd like to be on that committee too. I'd be happy to. Good. So, we have so, three, we have so much. So we have Tina and Cindy and Carrie and Elizabeth and Marissa, and that's just perfect because they're not even on our committee, so they don't have any, you know, uh, air, uh, issues of a uh, quorum or anything like that. Okay. And I'm happy to help too. All right. So let's just the four of you, the five of you, uh, it's, uh, Jason will, Marissa and Elizabeth, would you please give Jason your contact information? Sure. Sure, thank you. And then we'll form a meeting and um, we'll get started. I think Emily wants to be on muting. Emily. Emily, okay, let me find Emily. Okay. I don't know why Emily keeps getting muted though. So Jason, what happens is just, if you mute yourself, you can't unmute. You have to oh, be unmuted. Okay. Oh. So please, if you can keep an eye on the chat. <laughs> myself. Emily? Emily, can you hear us? Okay. Am I unmuted now? You're good. Yes, yeah. Emily, we can Yay. hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you have your um, email address, Jason? Um, is it, yeah, can, it, can, can it be put up on a chat or something so that we can all write, know where to write to? Yeah, uh, I'm going to put it on the chat right now. Okay. Okay. All right, so what, anyone else want to make comment? I was Emily. just trying to get out to agree with Randy. I think we should just move this forward, create that subcommittee and just, because we're just going to keep talking around in circles. I think we kind of know what needs to be done. I think we have a good framework. Nora's done all the paperwork from what I could see from the previous email. So I think we just need to get people together on board and just move forward. Yeah, and what we'll do is also, like I said, we'll try to get some research on what other communities have and have done, and we'll share some good dog park ideas uh, for you. I know Jerry built one in Hamilton. That's beautiful. So, like, he has experience. So, we'll, we'll get a whole bunch of ideas together and see what we can come up with. So let's do it with the subcommittee. Right, right. The rest of us. Can, okay. can, I, make, can I make one related comment? So... We had, you know, there was an ad hoc tennis committee to try and figure out what to do with an RFP for, for a tennis in Harbor Island Park. And that committee has sort of finished its task. And now the village is going to propose another ad hoc committee. 
that would be composed of three people from the tennis committee, hopefully three people from rec and parks, and then three people just from elsewhere in the village to talk about a vision for year round recreation options in the village. And so that should be on our agenda for September 15th to, 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 to form the committee. And so if, you know, if anybody on this committee is interested in being on it, just think about that for, think about that. Although I think a dog park is year round recreation, right? Yeah. Not if it's at Harbor Island. Let's just focus on our thing. If you focus on too big a picture, nothing gets. No, well, what, I, what I'm saying is the, the, the village is asking the Rack and Parks Commission to be part, three, a couple of members to be part of this. So if that, that's, I just wanted to give you a heads up that you're going to get that request. So okay, thank you. maybe there's three of you who are eager. But, then, but it also um, kind of presents a challenge opportunity, depends on how you look at it. So in this subcommittee, do we look outside of the parks and rec to invite people to have input on it? You mean for the year round committee? For the dog park. Oh, for the dog park, you could, you know, I would say, I mean, I don't, there's no prohibition in getting public input. And I think that um, the best thing to do is get public input earlier, not when there's a final proposal. I agree, because you don't want it, you know, biting you in the end. Right. Right. Well, everything the subcommittee does is going to report back to this committee. The subcommittee can't make decisions on its own. No, so it's, no, but I'm right. saying, but even, but I mean, having having Elizabeth and Marissa right. involved is good yeah. because they have yeah. thoughts about it. You know, maybe maybe putting up a couple signs in the park saying, you know, we're th we're thinking about a dog park. Call us with ideas. Great. Okay. So now we have we have members of the rec board. We have two outside people. So this is terrific. So let's table this discussion. Let's let them meet. Okay. Let's move on. So Randy. I, we can go back. The, the original thing we were talking about was walking of dogs, but it got turned into this dog park. And there were a lot of people asking where we stand with walking of the dogs. So where, what, what is the answer to that, Nora? You're right. I mean, I, we haven't made a determination on that. Well, so the, the idea was the, the board's pushing through with the recommendation to expand walking of dogs in Harbor Island Park. So I think the idea of doing it in every park, which was the other proposal, was 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 a little overwhelming and had too many, too many had there were too many people who were too frustrated by it. So maybe, you know, maybe that's another deep dive and maybe as you think about this dog park you'll be able to come up with recommendations of, of feasible recommendations for which parks could accommodate dogs and which parks really can't but i think that is because especially with the neighborhood parks there's every you know the neighbors need to have some the, the neighbors it's the neighbors need to have buy-in for this and so i don't think that there was neighborhood buy-in for for those proposals so there was for the most part there were there were people who were who were objecting. Didn't we agree on a trial? We did. We did agree on a trial. We did and agree that, on a trial, and, that and was then we got sidelined. So it got sidelined for two reasons: the trial in COVID. The trial in Columbus Park got sidelined because of the U.S. Open, which got sidelined because of COVID. But then it turns out that the people who really wanted that actually have a dog park in their complex. So that kind of mitigated that. But the good news about all the conversation about Columbus Park is now there are going to be swings there, and that's the only park in the village that doesn't have swings. So, you know, we're putting swings, two sets of swings there. If you can't sell dogs, sell swings. <laughs> right, right. That's how it works. And um, then I think the conversation in Florence Park, I mean, that there was tremendous opposition from residents in terms of just tremendous opposition. And then that morphed into the um, kind of myth that you had recommended that a dedicated dog park be built in Florence Park. All so right. I, it's just like a bad game of telephone. There's so I think much. there's a there's do over. Much. I just want to answer Tina's point to you, Nora, is so on the, on the in, in a couple meetings, the board of trustees is going to vote to expand hours for Harbor Island to have allowed dog, walk, dog walking. Is that correct? I mean, that's what we're, that's what the proposal is. I think that there's general support both, you know, I think there's support amongst the board for it. And I think there's support amongst the public for it. And it's the recommendations that you all made with that great map that Jason did that showed what the areas were going to be. So and what are the times? 
it's everything but the playgrounds and the fields, and it's dawn to dusk. Yeah, and that and, and that's that okay, makes perfect sense. Yeah. So right. it will it will include the East Basin now, not just the West, because the West Basin they're already allowed dawn to dusk on leash. It mm -hmm. was the East Basin that you really couldn't bring them there except the very early morning hours. So that's to be expanded from dawn mm -hmm. to dusk. No fields, no playgrounds, no beach. Obviously, just common mm -hmm. sense. Right. So you summed it up perfect, what, Carrie. That's it. Bingo. Come to that meeting. Thanks, yeah, Mary. that's the simplest I've ever heard anyone explain it. <laughs> you, know, you just have to try for simple. Okay, yeah. cool. That's over. Randy, um, before yeah. we go, I got to make some announcements or I need wait, some. Wait, wait. We have to prove the minutes. Yeah, we have to prove the minutes. I didn't get the minutes. Were the minutes emailed? I Maybe, maybe I missed it. The old minutes. We didn't the have the an August minutes. meeting. We didn't have an August meeting. So they were from. No, uh, the, oh, oh, so, okay. Right. Sorry. From the uh, July meeting, right. Did people have a chance to read them? I don't remember what they said, I'll be honest. Chris, right, likewise. A motion to approve the minutes. Carlo, did you second? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor or who remember or saw them? Anyone opposed? Okay, the minutes are passed. Jason, it's yours. Okay, I'll make it quick because I know we're at the end and this was technically not on the agenda, but I'm just going to give it a, a recreation update, okay? So, as you guys know, we do uh, turkey trot for 53 some odd years. I think this year would have been, will be 54. So, we have an option here. We obviously can't do it in person because of the pandemic. We can go on to digital and do a digital race where everyone runs on their own. Um, but it's going to be challenging. I don't think we're going to get the participation level we are. We have to, it's going to cost us money to do it. Obviously, we bring in some money in revenue by people registering, but I worry that we won't get enough registrants to cover the cost because it's, you run on your own. The whole basic point of a digital race is you register online, you pay, and then you have two weeks to run your race and submit your time on an honor system. It's not great. Some communities are doing it like East Chester did it. Some communities are just not. So sounds like, sounds I want to, get, to me. I want to get your your all of you community members' opinion on it. What do you think? I know it's a long-standing tradition. We do it in person, um, so I don't want to uh, offend it on if we don't if we we, we ask it this year and bring it back in person next year. Anyone have any thoughts? How did, it go, how, did, how did it work for East Chester? Did they have participants? They did. Um, they had low numbers. They had some participants. Um, it was so-so, they told me. It's really hard to, bet, to see the benefit because you don't see any people, right? Right. Just, they upload online. So it's, it's one of those things like, you know. I hate it. Because when you've been to Turkey Trot, it's so cool. It's such a coming together of people in our community, outside our community. It's such a fabulous event that- It's, it's it, the largest event we run in, in, the, in the recreation department. Mm -hmm. That includes the most amount of village residents. Yeah. It's like 50, like we never have that many village residents in one location ever in any event we do. So it's pretty special. Um, but obviously the digital version will be that. Jason, what would be like the approximate cost and staff time? Uh, staff time would be quite a bit, quite a bit, um, because we get we field all the phone calls. We have to make sure the registry. Normally, it would be the same type of staff time like if we were doing the race. We still have to provide them with either a T-shirt, a little swag bag, a water bottle. That's where I'm having a tough time for it. Normally, I could do that via sponsorship. That helps me cut those costs way down, and I'm not going to get that this year. There's no benefit to them. It, I'm just not going to get it. We're in a tough situation. So it, it, it really is. I, I, I spoke to Jerry about it. He kind of feels like he'll let me let us make the decision, you know. Um, but I just don't want to offend anyone if we don't have it this year, even in, if it's in a digital format. So. so it's either do it digitally or postpone it till next year. That's all right. I hate to say this, but I would say postpone it. I agree. I, I would too. If it's something that's that big and you don't think you're going to get like a lot of participate participation because you're trying to do it digitally, I would also lean towards postponing it until next year. 
Okay. I agree. All right, then let's take a vote. Um, everybody <laughs> in favor of postponing it till 2021, please raise your hand. They're Anyone? all good. Anyone opposed? I just have a question. Jason, have people been reaching out to you about it yet? But shockingly, um, we have, I have not received one phone call or one email about okay. it. I received a phone call about, I received something about camp out, about tree lighting, very few, but not about that. I'm so shocked. Okay. I, think, that was, that was I, don't people, I don't know if people are just under the impression that they know that it, there's 1,200 people that race and it's such a tightly gathered group that they're not even thinking about it because they know it's unrealistic. Yeah. Uh, Dan, also, what you, Dan was opposed. I'd like to hear what he was thinking. I'm not opposed. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Did you? You were opposed. Oh, I did too. Your hand was still up for the opposed. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, I think we should. I think you know, the tough year. We grappled with the same thing with our sports leagues, and I, I don't think you try to force something. That's just my personal view. Yeah, I mean, the postponing parades, and I mean, on and on and on. The list just continues. You know. I appreciate I, I mean, it. Actually, I don't think we can actually, we can't have a gathering of more than 50 people. We so, the, the, I mean, it's not, it's, it's, we can't, we can't do it. And, and this is in November anyway, right? So we don't even know what's going to be happening then. We don't. There's a little bit of uncertainty, obviously. Yeah. Point, Cindy. Um, we are doing, just so you guys know, I don't know if you've seen Facebook, but we are doing a scarecrow build, which, which uh, my fabulous rec staff came up with this great idea. So basically we're having a very small group of people, like 24 each session, mm -hmm. two sessions, one day. We're going to give all the supplies, the, the stuffing, the head, the burlap. Mm -hmm. Their families are going to build it. They're going to color it, decorate it, put their own clothes on. Then we're going to decorate Maranek Avenue. We're going to put uh, hay bales in front of each light pole. We're going to put oh, the great. scarecrow in the light pole. We're going to put corn stalks. And we're going to have the mums, the, the fall mums up on the light poles. And we're going to have a little scarecrow trail where we can see everyone's families uh, that made their scarecrows at the event, which I think is really cool. And the event is sold out. It sold out in six days, and 40 right. out of 48 of the registrants were from either the Village Larchmont or the Town of Meredith. So they're all local people, which I love to see. That's awesome. I was, yeah. th I was thrilled to see something seasonally new and exciting, really. With Different, that. yeah. We can't do our traditional spectacular because mm -hmm. that's a thousand person event. So this is something we can do in the fall. We feel it's safe. We're going to have a secure check in the whole night so that it's just those folks that registered. And I, and I think it's going to be great uh, and a lot of fun. So we're going to be doing that. Um, and then I would also like to uh, lastly mention the field permit, fall field permits. So as you guys know, we are allowed to have uh, youth sport. Um, they are 50 person per field area, which which is on their permits. Um, the only people that we permitted this year are past field users. And when I say that, I mean Larchmont Mamaroneck Little League, Larchmont Mamaroneck Football Club, which is our soccer local soccer organization, and Southeast Consortium, which is the special needs kids up and down at the town center, which they do fantastic work. And that's it. You will see a lot of kids safely out there in a large, in, in a spread out area. But keep in mind that we are only taking our own kids this year, and we've been uh, hammered with requests, and they've all been denied. I, I just, we just can't do it. We just don't have the space. Uh, to Jason, did you, did you mention French American School? Um, so French American School, uh, they have a new athletic director, Delphine, who I met the other day. Um, they requested time on the soccer field. Uh, it was not granted to them because I do not have the space. And uh, Large Farm American Football Club is not going to be able to give up space so that the French American school can, can play. And, and that's what the normally the deal is. They're not, as far as I know, they're not doing that this year. So what we will do, like we did in the year past, is we will let the French American school do uh, running. They can run around the perimeter of the harbor. Uh, but that was really the only thing I was able to offer them this year because of the space limitations and the COVID. And I just, I just don't have enough turf for everybody. Anyone else have anything else to bring up? I do. Hello. Hey, Jason. Yeah. Uh, the, the kayak racks that I think they're going to 
hopefully come in the spring or is that on hold as well? That whole area. Yeah. That it's not, yeah. it's not on hold, Carlos. So, so uh, um, this is really discussion for a future meeting, but we have a, an issue with the gunder boom. Um, right. I'm working with uh, our, our Harbor master and uh, Jerry to try to, and Barry to try to figure out the solution here. I can, I will update you when you know more, but part of that solution is going to be more kayak racks. I know we know we need to expand those, that dock to, to be able to put the racks there for people to have their kayaks off water. And I think we all agree that that's the solution. Um, so, you know, we're working on stuff. I, I can't commit to saying it'll be in the spring. Um, I can okay. try, but like everything else, it's a, uh, it's on the back burner right now. Understood. You know, but it's part of our project, Kyle. It's all part no, of the project. So, no, I hear you. Okay, so thank you, everyone. Uh, this was uh, really a great turnout. I think this is a better turnout virtually than it is in person. And I can tell you, it's a lot warmer than that rec building. <laughs> so, um, so may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Sure. Okay. Cindy and who was the second? And Karen yeah. seconded. And so, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, nice to see you, Dan. You have your real COVID beard there. Everyone, stay well. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Nice to see everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.